Okay, <clears throat> good morning and welcome to this rather strange lecture room. Uh, today we'll talk about syntax trees and how to construct them. And uh, you remember about syntax trees. We have, uh, let's say, a grammar that says something like an expression can be an identifier or it can be an expression plus another expression. And if we get some input like this, that's an identifier plus another identifier. If we build a parse tree for this, and the parse tree, you remember, shows all the productions that <coughs> are used to um, generate this from the start symbol. So if you have x and plus and y, uh, you must first take this identifier, reduce it to expression, or interpret it as an expression, and then the same thing with the other one. And then you can uh, uh, <coughs> create a new expression using that plus production, so you have x plus y. If you want to build this tree to continue working with your a small source program in your compiler, it would be a bit unnecessary to have a node here and a node there. So what you do is instead of a parse tree, you make a syntax tree. And a syntax tree is sort of a simplified parse tree. Uh, things like this, where you have, you just say x is an expression, okay, it's still the same x. Uh, you skip that, and on the other side, and then instead of having plus in its uh, own subtree below this expression node, you move it up and have a plus node instead. So the syntax tree is just x plus y. And the syntax tree shows us how to calculate this expression, if you want to calculate it. Uh, so if we have a slightly uh, more advanced expression, a times b minus c minus d. And now we don't have that grammar anymore. Now we have another uh, more complicated grammar, but <coughs> normal. Uh, then you remember uh, when parsing this, we use priority and associativity. So priority tells us that multiplication is higher priority than minus. So this should be done first using priority. And well, obviously minus has the same priority as minus. So we need to look at associativity. So we start from the left. Minus is left associative. Associativity, and also we can build a complete expression like this. And when we translate this into a syntax tree, we get something like this. First a times b, and then minus c. And finally minus d like this. If we instead had um, tried this one and tried to balance the tree, you have still a times b, but then uh, you rearrange the minus nodes and get this one. What expression is this if we write it as a normal, normal infix expression like this. How would you write this one? It is a, b, c, and d, and it's one multiplication and two minus, but how, <coughs> how do I write this? Yeah? With the parent pieces around c and d. c and d, yes. Uh, so you still have a times b, and over here you have c minus d in the right subtree. 
And to uh, <coughs> subtract all this from that, you need to put parentheses around this. We can also have um, syntax trees for other things, such as assignment and statements like an if statement or a while statement. So let's look at that. Assignment, uh, A is set to the value of C times D uh, plus E. Well, <coughs> assuming now that uh, assignment has the lowest priority of all operators, then we will get a tree that looks like this. A is assigned, and then the entire expression on the right-hand side. So plus multiplication C times D plus E, like this. And if we have an if statement, if, and with C syntax, if A is less than B, then set C to 1, else set, let's say, D to 2. How do I make a syntax tree for this? Well, it is an if statement. So, let's put an if node at the top like this. And how many subtrees do we have under this uh, if node? <clears throat> how many parts are there to an if statement? The condition and the expression itself. The condition? And what we have to do. But this part. Do we not have three ports? I, I would say it's three ports. Uh, <coughs> you could do some, some construction with a body port, which then is divided into two. But the easiest way to do this is three ports. You have the condition, you have the true port, and the false port that you do if the condition is false. So three subtrees. And the condition, uh, nothing strange with this operator. It's just a normal operator. So A is less than B, looks this, like this. And then you can have C is set to 1 and D is set to 2. If you have a while statement, While A is less than B, do um, uh, A equals A plus 2. How would you draw a syntax tree for the while statement? Well, how many ports does it have? So I have a question yes. You mean this one? Well, the, the, uh, I would say that the natural way to do it is the, the same order as in the, in the statement. You have the condition here, you have the true path there, and the false path there. So just the same order. Yeah. I mean, you could do something else, but then I think that would be confusing. Okay, back to the while statement. Uh, <coughs> we have a while node. And how many subtrees? Two, yes. The condition and the body of the loop. So A is less than B. While A is less than B. Do, and now we have an assignment. A is set to A plus 2, like this. So. What 
might be a bit difficult to decide how to do is when you have several uh, statements in the body of the loop or in uh, one of the branches of uh, the if statement. So let's say if I have while x is less than y, do a is set to 1, b is set to 2, c is set to 3, like this. Now, you could, of course, uh, create a block statement node, because you know the, the, y, um, the syntax for the while statement is a keyword while, parenthesis, condition, and parenthesis, and then any uh, statement. So I wouldn't have needed these brackets, these uh, curly braces, uh, around the body of a equals a plus 2. But here I need them because I have several, and uh, the statement that is the body of the loop can be a compound statement like this. So you don't, you don't actually need the braces, uh, the brackets in this case. But how would I do this? Well, again, a while, and uh, you still have a condition. But what do we do here? Well, we could create some sort of block node that can have three or any number of subtrees, because I can put any number of statements in here. So, any number of subtrees, but that is a bit difficult to work with. Yeah, or maybe not difficult, but it requires adding a special case here with a uh, infinite, possibly infinitely large node in the tree. So one way of doing this that is that instead of a block node, I just chain these statements together. I have some sort of chaining node. And I like to use uh, semicolon, uh, or you can call it chain or anything, or link, because it will form a linked list. And here I have the first one, a is set to 1, and then I need a new link to link in uh, b equals 2. And then, well, you can end the linked list in several ways. One is to uh, have an extra link like this for c equals 3, and then uh, have a null pointer at the end. Or you can, if you wish, uh, just put the statement here uh, as the other subtree of this link node. So some sort of link node that links together uh, statements. And also note, in this case, we don't have any special uh, block node for the, block st uh, for the compound statement, the block statement. Uh, we might want to have that if, we ha if it's actual C, where you can uh, uh, define variables inside the compound statement inside the block that would just exist in, in that block. But this lets you work with um, uh, non-infinite nodes in the tree. Okay. Uh, if we don't have infinite nodes, how many, uh, how many subtrees do we need in a, um, in a node? Let's say we're trying to parse actual C. What is the largest, what is the statement in C that has the largest number of subtrees or largest number of components? And you know the switch statement can have a list of cases, but I assume we use something like that, this for, for the switch statement. So uh, we don't need an infinite node for that either. Yeah, the for loop. Uh, so, 
So if I say for i is set to zero as long as i is less than big N uh, plus plus i, and then do something f uh, h. Then I have four subtrees. I have this initialization part, which is run before the loop. I have the condition i is less than n. I have uh, the body of the loop. And here we have a function call. Uh, how do we handle a function call in a syntax tree? Well, it's an operator. So you could say that you call the function f with the argument h. If you look at the list of operators in C and some other languages, uh, <coughs> function call is just another operator. And then we have this um, uh, increment step that is done at the end of the loop, or each iteration of the loop. And how do I write this? Plus plus i. Well, I have an operator, plus plus. Uh, that operates on one single argument. And how to, <coughs> how to represent the difference between plus plus i and i plus plus is left as an exercise for anyone who's interested. Okay. Uh, in the lab, uh, number five, I think it is. Yes, in uh, assignment number five, you will build syntax trees. Uh, you don't need the for statement there, it's, but you need loops and if statements. How will these syntax trees be implemented? Well, when you build a tree in a programming language, C or Java or anything, uh, you have a node that is uh, an object of some kind. Uh, in C you call it a struct, in C++ you would call it an object, uh, and in Java also an object. So you have something that looks um, it has a number of parts. And let's say we have a type field, because when you have a pointer to a node, you will build a tree using pointers. Uh, you get to the node and you don't know, is it a for node, is it an if node, or was it, what is it? Uh, so you need some sort of type field. Uh, if you have an object-oriented language and, and uh, can use subclasses, uh, you could use the built-in mechanism to uh, differentiate between for nodes and if nodes. Uh, you would have subclasses then. But if we're using, it, uh, using plain C, uh, we have to have some sort of type field. And then we have the subtrees. So let's say we have an array of... Um, well, we don't need the, uh, the for loop, so three uh, subtrees like this which are also uh, nodes, which are also structs like this, with a type and possibly a number of subtrees. Let's say two like this. And at the end, the leaf nodes will be, well, what kind of leaf nodes do we have? What kind of leaf nodes do we need in our syntax tree? Well, variable nodes, which are identifiers, and numbers. At least in our, uh, our um, 2.9 program that we're working with on the assignments, because we only have um, uh, plain integer numbers. We don't have any uh, floating point numbers or strings or anything like that. So <coughs> down here we can have either a number, 
like the number 55, or we could have an identifier. And you remember that the scanner translates identifiers in the 2.9 program to uh, uh, numbers. So instead of working with uh, the identifier n or i, we give it a number, which is an index into the symbol table, which is an array. So we can have id number 14. And again, if it's C, uh, use a struct. Leave some space up here. Uh, the type field. Well, we can have an integer, or we can have an enum, uh, an enumeratable enumerated? Uh, data type, which is also an integer. You just have some syntax to, to hide it. And what type of nodes do we have? Well, we have a plus node, we have a minus node, we have maybe a times node, and so on. And also if and while. And Identifier and number. So, and you can do it in different ways if you want to, but now I put a node type called type. So, this is the type field. And then, how do we handle this? Well, it's an array of pointers to a struct node. So, struct node, pointer orgs, because these are the arguments. Let's say that this is a plus node. Then you have the different arguments to plus. Yeah. You can call it something else if you want to. And <coughs> let's say maximum is three, so we can handle the if statement. This almost works. It doesn't work for these ones because then we um, uh, <coughs> don't have a um, place for this number. Uh, so let's just add that int leaf value. So now you have a struct that can be used to build these syntax trees. Well, you remember these um, syntax-directed translations uh, where you, to your grammar, you add either semantic actions, that is just a, uh, a piece of code that is run when the parser has found something that matches this production, uh, and then you get a syntax-directed translation scheme. Or you can have semantic rules. You associate uh, values with the nodes, uh, attributes uh, that have values, and you have semantic rules that uh, define how to assign these um, uh, attribute values to each node in the tree. And then you get a syntax-directed definition, which is a table with production, 
corrections in one uh, column and the semantic rules in the other column. So let's see how we can do this build trees using a syntax directed definition. A grammar. Which says that, okay, you have expressions. And what is an expression? Well, it can be one expression where you add a term at the end. You remember we use this to uh, handle both associativity and priority. Uh, it can also be one expression and then you add minus term at the end or a single term uh, can form an expression. Now, if we want to add multiplication and division, we would start working with factors, but let's skip that. And instead, instead say that, okay, a term can be an identifier, or it can be a number, or, <clears throat> well, if you take an expression of any kind and put within parentheses, then you can start using that expression as a term so I have this one and an expression and an end parenthesis. And to uh, show the uh, terminals, uh, I draw squares around them. The source program, which isn't really much of a program, it's just an expression, uh, can be a minus 4 plus c. And of course, when you translate that to a stream of tokens, you get identifier, minus token, number token, plus token, and identifier token like this. Okay. And as we said before, <coughs> the scanner generates this uh, sequence of tokens, but it also keeps track of which identifier, which number, which identifier. So somewhere these are stored, but the parser doesn't care about A and 4 and so on. It only cares about which terminal does it see. Okay, the parse tree for this. And is this an ambiguous grammar that can let us build several parse trees for the same input or not? Well, let me draw one parse tree and you can see if you can find another one. Okay, can you make another parse tree? I think you can switch places, but there would be minus and the plus, uh, so... Um, Here. Yeah, do the plus first, and from the downside, do the minus and the plus, and then of course switch the IDs and numbers also. Mm, 
Uh, and then this would be, which ID would this be then? Here I would have number four, I assume, because it says minus four. And I would have, you mean like this, I guess you mean something like this, right? Uh, this is an ID, then this is an ID, and this is a, a number. I, I would switch it around. I would um, start with the minus, so I'd say um, A minus four would be on the bottom left, and then the plus to the top. Um, so yeah, just basically break the rules of math uh, to the right. Um, uh, am, I, am I missing something? A, four. Yeah, I mean, um, I think it's, I, I don't think you can do it because if you write something else here <coughs> and try to use this grammar, you will get another expression. I mean, you could have a plus c minus 4, which mathematically is the same thing. a plus c minus 4 should, should be the same value as this if we have uh, normal math rules. But then you have another expression, another source program, and a completed, you will have a different parse tree. Yes, you will have a different parse tree, but then it's not the same input. Okay, yeah, that will be the same. Yeah, I so, so I, I would say that no, not without changing the input, but then you can't build two different parse trees for the same input, for the same source program. So uh, I would say that this is not an ambiguous grammar. Okay, uh, <coughs> this chain of nodes here, for example, is not necessary, so we use a syntax tree instead. And then you will have a plus node at the top. You will have a minus node here because you take uh, a minus 4, so you have this identifier uh, a minus this number 4, and you have the id c here, and these are the nodes you will have. Using the structs we saw before, or some other way of implementing it. So, how do we build this parse tree? Well, first of all, you need to um, have some operations to create the nodes. And of course, you could use uh, just write uh, malloc size of uh, struct node like this in your code and uh, insert things. But let's um, make a few functions that does this for us. mknode that we can call that does the malloc. Or if you use C++, then it's new. If you use Java, then it's new again. If you use C Sharp, then I forget what it's called. New, I guess. And you send the type, which will be put in the type field. And then the arguments, argument one, argument two, argument three. So for example, to uh, build a plus node, you send plus, and then you somehow got this subtree and this subtree, which are pointers that you have in your program, because everything here is pointers pointers down here. So let's say you have pointer 1 and pointer 2, which you got by building these trees. And then uh, just write null on the third argument because that's not used in the plus node. And then you need the mk leaf, make a leaf node, which again has a type and the only leaf nodes that we can use are identifier number, 
So you can send identifier and then uh, the number of the identifier, which in the 2.9 program is the place, the position in the symbol table. So ID number. And you can also make leaf number and then uh, the value of the number. So you, you send it. And all these, uh, both these functions give you a pointer back, which you can then use in subsequence calls to uh, uh, put in other nodes and build a tree using that. Now that we have these um, functions, we can write a um, uh, syntax directed definition that sets that sets uh, attribute values, which are these nodes in the syntax tree. I mean. When I built this subtree here, I get a pointer here, and I can use that pointer as a value of an attribute in the parse tree. So if we do it step by step, and write this syntax directed definition, you remember, no, listen. We have this table with two columns, the production and the semantic rule. And the first <coughs> rule we had was that an expression can be an expression plus a term. And so we know which expression is which. Let's call this one uh, E1 and this one E2. So here, when we found an expression and a term and add them together, then this would be E1 and this would be E2, right? And <coughs> you remember we had attributes that could be named, let's say, value, which is the value of the, the expression. It could be named type, it could be code, but here we will have a node pointer. So let's say that E1 dot uh, node pointer is set to, well, what do we set it to? Well, we uh, create this plus node and insert these two subtrees. So call make node, send plus, and then we have the nodes, the node pointers from the two sum trees. So I have E2, which is this one, and T, which is that one. So I have E2 dot node pointer, comma, T dot node pointer, comma, no or no semicolon, because this is not uh, code. This is not program code, it's just an expression. Uh, we have the same, uh, or the, the similar rule for minus. Uh, an expression can be another expression minus a term. And we do the same thing, but of course, we create a minus node instead. So E1 node pointer is set to mk node minus, and again, I use the node pointer I get from the um, expression E2. 
ban from the term, like this. And we have a turn, we had a third expression, or a, rather a third production for expression. If I have a term like this one, I can reduce it to expression. In other words, I take this expression, in this case uh, the identifier A, which is a term, and then I say, oh, it's also an expression. So I reinterpret it as an expression. How will uh, the semantic rule for that look? E dot node pointer. How will the semantic rule look? If I have a node pointer that uh, this triangle here means subtree, if this term is a pointer to a, uh, has the value pointer to subtree, uh, what will this, the syntax tree for expression b when I call this term an expression? Well, it'll just be the same thing. I mean, the syntax tree doesn't change just because I call it an expression instead of a term. So all I need to do is to take the terms known pointer and send it up and <coughs> uh, put it in the node above. So this node will then point to the same subtree. We'll go through this in, a, in an example, so I'll draw it on the board and you can see what happens. A similar thing we get when we have a term that is an expression within parentheses. How does that look? Well, the term now has a known pointer. And if I have an expression <coughs> which is a tree, a syntax tree, and puts parentheses around it, I'm just calling it a term instead of an expression. So again, I just copy the node pointer. So I get the opposite of the above one. Here I had a term and I call it an expression. Here I have an expression, I call it a term. So I just copy the pointer. And we had two final productions. Let me just draw them here and then we take a break. We had ID and we had num. And if you wish you can, during the break, uh, <coughs> think about how to use mkleaf to build these small subtrees. Okay, 15 minutes break. Okay, let's go <coughs> back to this um, syntax directed definition that tells us how to assign attribute values to the nodes in the tree. And we saw how we could create these inner nodes, uh, plus and minus nodes, and how we sort of let values, or rather the subtrees, just flow upwards when, when we don't, um, uh, when we have this type of node that just renames something. But how do we create a node for an identifier? Well, we have it up there. I call MK leaf. So if the term is an identifier, then T dot node pointer will be MK leaf. And I send in ID. And then I have some way, I need some way to get the ID number, but I get that from the scanner. So let's say that this ID 
uh, has a uh, value, uh, the lexical value, lexical value, because that is the number, the which identifier it is. And the same thing with a number. So if this subtree, this term is a number, then t dot node pointer will be the result of another mk leaf with num. And we get the lexical value from the number. So num, oh, this is too hard to read. Lexical value. Because the, the <coughs> we have to start somewhere. And we start building the tree using the lexical values from the scanner. Okay. So I'll erase the syntax tree, but keep the parse tree, and we will see how using these semantic rules uh, can let us build the syntax tree. And you remember that you can, uh, when you have a parser, it can either construct the parse tree from the bottom up or top down. But when we apply the semantic rules, I mean, I can't really calculate this node pointer, which is a pointer to a plus node, without having these uh, pointers first. So I need to create the subtrees first. So let's build the tree bottom up. Uh, the parser will find this identifier. And apply this semantic rule. So we call mk leaf and create, we get a pointer to this Uh, this leaf node, which is an identifier node. <coughs> and let me erase that. Uh, and it is the node pointer in this term node, this one, that will point to this subtree. So let me um, say that I have um, a node pointer here and it points there. Because it's an, it's an actual physical pointer in memory pointing to this newly allocated node struct, which says that, okay, this is a struct for ID uh, A. Then we need to look at this expression. We can't build any other nodes except maybe these um, uh, nodes, but uh, here we can't build uh, any nodes above it before we have built this one. So let's look at the node pointer for that expression. And, well, where will that node pointer point? Yeah, what are we doing? We use this production. This term is now called an expression. And as you can maybe remember, I just copy the node pointer from the term to the expression. So now, it points to the same 
uh, node because it is, um, it is the same node. I can't construct anything here before I've done this. So now I need to look at uh, this term, which is a number. And we go to the final, the, the last production here, that a term can be a number, and we call mk leaf. So again, we call mk leaf for this number, and the number is 4. And here, this term has a node pointer, which points to this new this newly allocated node. Okay? I can now, if I want, go on and <coughs> create this minus node here. Or I can jump over here and build a, uh, or create a, uh, another identifier node. Uh, the semantic rules don't have to follow any specific order, as long as I have already done uh, the rules for creating the values I need in, this, uh, in, in the rule I want to use. But let's do this <coughs> E2, this expression here. And now, of course, uh, we use this minus production. And here it says E1 and E2. But now, in this, um, uh, when working with this production here, uh, then it's this one that's E1. And this one that's E2. Okay. So I called MK node, MK node for to uh, uh, create a minus node like this. And this is an inner node, so let's use this array of arguments or subtrees. I insert the E2 node pointer, which points to this A node, and the T node pointer, which points to this uh, 4 node. So here I'm building this new subtree. And the node pointer from this node will then be set to point to this new node. So now uh, this node in the parse tree has a node pointer that's point to the minus node. Now we need to uh, do something with this C identifier. So we use this production and this semantic rule that calls MK leaf for the identifier uh, C. And as before, I have a pointer here. That points to this newly created node. And finally, we get this plus node. Uh, we have an expression plus a term. And we use the, uh, the first production here that says that the node pointer for this, uh, this expression is well, create a new plus node and insert pointers to this subtree and that subtree. So, mk node creates a plus node, which has a pointer here 
and there. And put the value from mk node, which points there, put that <coughs> in this attribute value. And now we built the physical syntax tree. Physical in the sense that we actually built it using malloc and pointers uh, in memory. And this tree, where, where is this tree stored? if not in physical memory? Well, it's not stored, it doesn't exist. This is just <coughs> a way to describe how the productions in the grammar were applied by the parser. So this is not an actual tree that is stored somewhere. This is just how the parser went through the different productions in the grammar uh, and applied them to the input, the token stream. Okay. Bison, you will use the semantic actions in the Bison grammar to uh, uh, call MK node and MK leaf and to uh, create these physical pointers. And you remember that Bison has. Uh, <coughs> expressions like e uh, or rather rules as saying that for example this uh, an expression can be an expression plus a term and then you can have a semantic action and you also remember these dollar values that bison lets let us works with uh, Dollar one is the value of the first argument to uh, the first element to the right of the colon. Dollar uh, two is the value of plus, which uh, is just the plus token, so it has no specific value. And dollar three is the term. So what you would do is to say that okay, if I call mk node with plus. Here. And the value of the left subtree, which is uh, the pointer to the actual created node, you would write dollar one here, and then dollar three for uh, the subtree from the term, and then null, like this. And you also remember that the result, which is the value of this expression, is called dollar dollar. So I would say dollar dollar equals mk node plus dollar one dollar three. So using the dollar system, the dollar values in Bison, you can store one attribute value. Uh, and in this case, I just have this node pointer. So dollar values are the node pointers. Uh, by default, uh, <coughs> the dollar values are integers. So you need to tell Bison that um, these are not just integers, these are uh, pointers. And there is uh, a directive percent 
union that you can use in bison to tell bison that, oh, it's not just uh, integers, it's, it can be other things, it can be pointers too. Okay? Let us leave these physical syntax trees and these uh, non-physical and non-existent porous trees and look at something that is not a tree, namely directed acyclic graphs. So first, what's the definition of a tree? Well, in computer science, a tree is a graph with uh, <coughs> directed connections. So it is not just a graph, but a directed graph. Uh, and the graph is a set of nodes with connections between them. So here you have a graph. And if you put directions on the arrows, you have a directed graph. Here you have a cycle. You can go from this node to that one and back. Or you can have uh, cycles that are, uh, use more than just two nodes. You have another cycle here. So an, I, uh, an acyclic or rather directed a cyclic graph is something that does not have cycles. But what it can have, it's, it can sort of, the branches in the tree can grow together and join. So a tree is also a directed a cyclic graph <coughs> where each node has at most one parent if the parent is the one that the arrow comes from. Where nodes have at most one parent. So <coughs> here is the tree and it has branches, but the branches don't join together. The directed acyclic graph though, yeah, it's like the tree, but it can grow together like this. And you often abbreviate this DAG. What can we use that for? Well, so far we've been working with trees. We translate our expression to trees, parse trees, syntax trees, and so on. So, for example, 2 plus 3 uh, <coughs> minus 4 times 2 plus 3. What will this be when we draw it as a tree? Well, we have 2 plus 3. Well, 2 plus 3 minus 4 times. So I get the multiplication here. And as you know, parenthesis don't show up in the tree, but they show how to organize the tree. The tree. So 2 plus 3 is performed before the multiplication. Okay, syntax tree. But we notice that <coughs> these subtrees are equal. 
So if these are pointers and structs, we could rearrange our tree and just to be clear let me draw arrows here so we see the, the directions and here well instead of creating a new plus node with a new physical subtree why don't I just point to the existing 2 plus 3 subtree. And then of course it's not a tree, it's a DAG. And how would we do that? Well, first of all, we need a way to find the duplicates. And it could be done by modifying mk node. So when we tell it to build a new subtree, it looks in the existing tree to see if do we already have this subtree somewhere. You could have a hash table that let, lets you quickly look up uh, subtrees and find this existing subtree. can be useful when you have um, complicated expressions, but maybe more so in other contexts. Let's say you uh, are building a chess program or a tic-tac-toe program, and <coughs> you have, uh, if I do, let's say, tic-tac-toe, I put an X there, and then my opponent puts an O there, and then I put an X there. I could get this two ways. Uh, by first starting there, and then putting my X there, or the other way. So, if I look at the possible tree of how can, I, uh, how can the game develop itself, depending on where I put the X. Well, uh, I can put an X in, in the middle, or I can put an X down here, down, and then we assume there are of course more uh, possibilities, but let's say the opponent puts it, the O there, and then if I put uh, my uh, X down, or in the middle. I get to the same position. And you know that when you code a game uh, to find, um, well, maybe not for a 3x3 three three tic-tac-toe, but let's say it's uh, five in a row or chess, uh, then the tree of possibilities very quickly grows. And if you can uh, merge together parts of the tree, then you can save a lot of work uh, when going through possibilities. Okay? Later we will look at how we can uh, use the syntax trees we have built and actually execute them. Uh, how we can write an interpreter that takes the syntax trees and uh, uh, executes not just uh, expressions like plus and minus, but also uh, if statements and loops. But we'll save all this to a later time, so I think we will finish a bit early today. Okay? Thank you.